Losing is obviously a part of sports, but it stings a little more when you know you beat yourself and could have made the game much easier by correcting some mistakes. For today's breakdown, we are going to start from the beginning when things were going in our way to pointing out some small things that could have prevented to change the outcome of the game. Early in the first quarter, Dilo comes over to set up a screen for LeBron down low and then is going to curl inside really quickly and open up to the ball. This is going to lead for AD, I mean KD to come over and also for Nurkic to come over and help out on the smaller Jones down here. Seeing that the help side was coming from both ways, Dilo smartly just gets it out and gets it a Rui. This is going to cause Booker to come over and rotate once again and then Rui quickly notices that and gets it one pass over to Austin for the wide open three. This was excellent ball movement by the Lakers to start off the quarter. The very next possession, the Lakers have all the Suns players backtracking on defense, not ready, which leads to free-flowing basketball for us. D'Lo here points at Austin to get him the ball. With the Suns still not set on defense, Reeves attacks the closeout, which causes a switch on the defenders. But even then, AR was able to blow past both of them, which makes Nurkic have to come help and disrupt the easy layup. AD's eyes immediately open up once he saw Nurkic feet off the floor, and Austin smartly dumps it off for AD's easiest bucket of the night. Yes, calling plays can be important, but when the defense is not set like that, it's best to get a free-flowing bucket off pure talent alone. On this play, AD and Rui step into the lane to help Austin guard Bradley Beal's initial drive, right? After allowing Austin to get back onto his man, he keeps on curling him this way. Bradley Beal picks up his dribble in the middle of the key. And if we look at everyone outside of the three-point line, right here, right here, and right here, Rui, Gabe, and DK did a great job of denying their man. Beal's only option was to give it here to Nurkic, and once he gives it up to Nurkic, well, if you notice, he, Austin's doing a really, really great job of denying the ball, but after he gives up this ball, he tries to do a DHO, remember, dribble handoff, and come around here, but for some reason, Nurkic turns his whole hip around and just completely takes out Austin out of the play. This was excellent defense, overall the best defensive possession of the night. Now is where I will start nitpicking at things that started going wrong for us. As soon as AD went to go take his rest, it was Jackson who came in for, for AD, and I really didn't understand what he was trying to do here. It was an inbound pass from D'Lo over to Jackson. I believe Jackson was supposed to open up more this way, and he was supposed to wait for Dalton to come over here. But for some reason, he ends up just keep dribbling the ball. And he doesn't set his feet. He like gets completely off of his feet and he just completely turns it over. That one made no sense to me at all. Then this next play, he's supposed to come set a screen over here for D'Lo on, on Booker. And all he has to do is there, pause there and stay there and, and do not move, right? Like that's, that's all he has to do. But for some reason, let me back it up a little bit. He's still moving and like he just hits him. And this is just the easy call. Look at the ref. It's just like, yeah, we're going this way. It was just really, really dumb. AD was doing his thing in the first quarter, carrying us to like good, decent sized lead. But the ref just started letting the Suns get away with a lot of things. On this drive, AD is going to lose Plumley with his jab step, completely sending him this way. AD puts it on the floor and he's going to attack the the basket right here and then you're gonna see Beals try to step up right Beal does do a good job of like coming straight up but if you notice he starts angling out I know AD is creating the contact but if we pause it there he literally has almost his whole leg on him he hit his chest and he's hitting his arm and to top it all off AD falls to the floor and there's one ref here sorry let me do this there's one ref here and a second ref right here. The fact that they missed this call was complete bogus. If we let the play run, I have the replay going on right here. Watch how AD goes up and right there. The contact is on the arm, one, and I think believe two right there. Yeah, he hits him a little bit, but for the most part, he's causing a lot of contact that should have been called. That hand right there, that's foul. And then he completely just brings him down to the floor. The fact that these refs missed this call is just, completely horrible to me 
AD should have been at the line and that's at least another bucket. Now for the most controversial play of the night was AD's no call. This was only a one possession game late in the fourth quarter so the Lakers needed to get any kind of points here. Austin makes a smart cut into the paint and he's going to pretend like he's going to go up for a floater but then he notices that Plumby comes and steps over a little bit of help. This allows Austin to dump it off to, to AD down low and AD is about to start going straight up right here for a a layup but if you notice AD's body starts magically outwards out of nowhere and the reason why is because if we rewind it a little bit you could clearly see Bradley Beal's both arms are pushing him out that way and not only that but as he goes up right here AD gets contact on the face they hit him JJ and the coaching staff jump up off of their seats in frustration and rightfully so because that would have been two free throws and it completely changes how the Lakers play at the last minute down only one instead of three. The Suns got bailed out big time right here by the refs. AD even comes over to tell the ref like yo like he hit me in the eye man like how do you not see that? And Ultimately the Lakers only lost by four while LeBron had arguably one of his worst games in his career. Plus, give credit to the Suns for hitting tough shots because we did play good defense on KD and Booker, but they were doing what superstars do and just hit shots that only they could make. To end the video, I'll leave it with LeBron explaining why he had a bad game, JJ Redick taking accountability for the Lakers only scoring 14 points in that second quarter, and Austin Reese praising JJ for his coaching style and holding everybody else accountable. But that's all from your boy Let's H for today. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. How are you feeling? I've been better. You can hear my voice. <laughs> been when, when did this kind of start? Friday. Uh, we lost to Kevin Durant and Devin Booker's ability to make tough twos. Um, thought our execution down the stretch was phenomenal. Um, there's one thing to nitpick. It's probably me. I probably should have gone to the fire uh, a possession or two earlier against KD. Um, but I liked that group that we had out there defensively. I trust those guys. And then the other thing I would say is like, we should never have a 14 point quarter. Uh, so that's, that's on me as well. That's part of that is me. I got to make sure we're running good offense. Um, but like it was a little random. We got stalled out. We talked about it at halftime for us to be a high level offense we've got to move bodies and we've got to move the ball and that they got a screen and you know they just kind of took us out of what we were doing initially and we were great in the second half we executed great in the second half it just that second quarter really hurt us i think you've said a bunch of times that you hate losing more than you like winning um you've been in the locker room after three wins with jj and you've been after in the locker room now with after a loss what was he like after a loss does he share that quality with you i think uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, we've had, you know, many of conversations on the golf course about, you know, just the competitive nature, um, you know, that he brings, that I bring, uh, that this whole team brings, to be honest. But I felt like he was, uh, you know, very encouraging, uh, you know, talked about some of the things we did well, some of the things that he said that he thought he could have did better. Um, and that just shows, you know, what a great leader looks like. Uh, you know, he came in and, and said that we probably should have went to, you know, firing on KD a little earlier because uh, he had it going. But you can look back in, you know, the midst of the whole game and say we could have did this, 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 and this. You know, you just got to, you know, accept the loss and, you know, watch the film and get better from it. It's early in the season, but are you encouraged by the care factor in here, like after a loss? Like... For sure. For sure. I mean, uh, you know, as he was walking out of the, you know, he brought it up, you know, said what he had to say as he was walking out. He let out, you know, a, a nice little F word, which, you know, just shows how much he cares. Uh, his, his passion is, is on a, on another level. Uh, and you can tell every single second of every day that he's locked into, you know, the betterment of our group.